Hello people, welcome to the mini games tutorial. So I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own mini games place. Okay, so this is a multi-part series. This is part one. Um, there's going to be a few more parts to come after this as well to finish off the to finish off the game. So this tutorial I'm just going to be teaching you how to add maybe one or two mini games to your place, and then hopefully by the end of the series you should be able to add your own mini games to the to the place. Okay and hopefully customize the mini games to your own to, to suit your own sort of standard okay anyway so let's begin now i've already recorded this to tutorial twice it just went wrong the first two times so i've already got all the code written out so what i'm going to do is i've got all the code commented out and i'm going to uncomment it line by line and explain what each line does okay so this is this is just the first part this is not everything it's just the first part uh, just, just to get you started in the mini games so first mini game we're going to make is a disappearing plates mini game. Okay. So what I want you to do is create your lobby. Um, my lobby is just a brick with a spawn in the center of it. Um, this is just for demonstration purposes. It doesn't need to look nice for now. Um, obviously, when you release your game, you want it to look a bit better than this. But for now, just this is okay. And what I've done as well is I've created. Let me just cut this into the workspace. A disappearing plates mini game so it's got lots of different 9x9 nine nine bricks as you can see the size is 9x9 nine nine, and the total amount of bricks is 8x8 eight eight here 8 bricks by 8 bricks it doesn't have to be just like mine you can make it however you want uh, this is just how I wanted to make mine but you can make it however you want okay so once you've done that group all your parts together and call it disappearing plates okay so group them all together and call it disappearing plates once you've grouped all of your parts together and you can pause the video as well just pause pause this video while while you make your lobby and while you make your disappearing plates once you've made all of those uh, and once you've grouped all your plates together side by side then you can unpause your video and then cut your disappearing plates model and what you should have is uh, you should have a model inside lighting called mini games okay so what we need to do is because you can't insert models directly into lighting what you should do is you should click on the workspace then go to insert basic objects click in here then insert a model into workspace then cut that model uh, a blank model cut it and paste it into lighting call that model mini games and then paste your disappearing plates uh, model into that mini games model. So okay, so cut the disappearing plates model and paste your cut uh, paste your disappearing plates model into your mini games model. Okay, and once you've done that, then you're ready to get onto the onto the scripting onto the scripting bit. So if you already haven't done that, then just pause the video and once you've done that, then then resume the video again. Okay, so let's go to the script. Now on the first line, we've declared a variable called minigames. Okay, this is our variable called minigames. And what I do advise is that you've watched um, my basic and advanced tutorial series and also my GUI tutorial series before you actually start watching this tutorial. I should have told you at the start. Um, yeah, so watch my other tutorials before you start watching this one because I'm going to whisk through all the easy parts um, and you might not understand them if you haven't watched my uh, previous tutorials. So anyway, let's begin. So I've created a uh, variable called minigames. It's going to be a, a table uh, containing game.lighting.minigames uh, function get children. So this table called minigames is going to contain all the objects inside this minigames model. Okay? Because it's got minigames get children. So get all the children from our minigames model. In this case, we've only got one child inside it, and the one child is disappearing plates. So at the moment, disappearing plates is an object sitting inside the minigames table. Okay. And that's that's all you need to know for that line. Next line, we've created a hint. Uh, that's just to tell our players in the game uh, what's going on. Okay. So instance new hint. Uh, and we're going to insert that hint into the workspace. And next line, we've got our game loop. Okay, this is the game loop. Uh, while true do, and it's going to keep looping throughout the game uh, as long as the server is still open. 
or as long as there's no crashes in the script. Okay, so next line. We've got an if statement here. Let me take out the if, if, else, and end. Okay, so if game.players.numPlayers, numPlayers is just a property of players. If the number of players in the game is greater than one, so if we've got more than one player in the game, then we can begin the game. But if there's not more than one player in the game, then what we're going to do is we're going to set our hint dot text to there needs to be more than one player in the game to start. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. If there's not more than one player in the game, then we're going to display as a hint there needs to be more than one player to start. And then we're going to wait one second. So we're going to keep checking if there's one player in the game every second. Okay? If we didn't have this wait here, if that wait was commented out, then we'd have an infinite loop into well not an infinite loop, it just it tried to loop way too fast and it just crashed the script. So we have to wait here to prevent the script from crashing. Okay? Now what we're gonna do next is we've got all this base bit set up. Uh, now what we need to do is if there is more than one player, so if there's two or more people in the game, then first line set the hint to deciding what game to play okay so h.text equals deciding what game to play and then we're going to wait three seconds just to let the players uh, actually read what we've typed in the hint okay so we need to give them time to read it which is three seconds it's long enough now what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable called ran game uh, this is just random it's going to be a random number uh, selecting what random game we're going to play. Okay, and this is going to be equal from to. It's going to be equal to math dot random one up until the number of the total number of mini games inside this mini games table. Okay, so this hash symbol here, the hash symbol here means um, the number of elements inside this table. Okay, that's all it means. The number of elements inside this table. And in this case, it's one. We've only got one element inside this table, and that is disappearing plates object. Okay? So, from anywhere from one up until the number here, this will be equal to one because we've only got one element inside here. <coughs> if we had maybe two or three mini games, it could be equal from anywhere from one up until three. Okay, so you get the point of how this RAND game works. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable called game chosen it's going to be an object variable and it's going to be equal to minigames and then the index uh, of the of the minigames table in this case it's going to be equal to the ran game which is anywhere from one up until the number of minigames uh, in this case it's, it can only be equal to one because we've only got one minigame so game chosen is going to be equal to minigames one here okay which is disappearing plates so now we know that our game chosen is the object of disappearing plates so what are we going to do with this object now that we've chosen it so next thing is displaying the name of the game chosen so what we're going to do is we're going to set the h.text to minigame chosen Oops. and then we're going to concatenate the game chosen name to the string minigame chosen uh, concatenate I don't think I've talked to you about concatenating uh, you all know how to do it but you don't know what the technical word for it is that's basically when you join uh, strings together so we're concatenating this string here to this string here because if I were to just to type game chosen dot name into here it wouldn't work it just it would just display minigame chosen game chosen dot name but we want to display the actual name of the of the object so we concatenate the name of the object which is this the object dot name to to this string here okay and then again we wait three seconds to let the people see uh, what game has been chosen we don't want to instantly exit or we don't want to instantly change the hint uh, hit the hint text so that the players can't actually see what's written on the hint so we want people to see the hint okay so we wait three seconds and now we make another variable called a game chosen clone. This is just a clone of the game chosen object because if we were to remove game chosen the game chosen object from from the minigames 
uh, model in the lighting, if we were to remove that and paste it and, and put it into the workspace, then the server would no longer be able to select a disappearing plate because it would be removed from the minigames model. So what we want to do is we want to clone it and then move it into the workspace. Okay, So clone it and then move the clone into the workspace, which we are doing on the next line here. Game chosen clone dot parent equals game dot workspace. So we're moving the clone to the workspace. Okay. So that is all to this script. Uh, I'm going to show you how it works by going to test server. In fact, what I want to do is actually no exit test server. I want to add a few more lines to the code. So once we've got the uh, once we've got the disappearing plates to the work, once we've moved it to the workspace, let's make a little timer when the round ends. So uh, let's make a little comment timer. Oops, timer, or let's call it countdown uh, until the game ends. Uh, we'll call it that. That will do. Uh, I spelled countdown wrong. There we go. So now we're going to have a little for loop for i equals Oops. For i equals 10 to 1, we are going to be changing the time later. Uh, this is just an example. Um, so we're going to have 10 seconds in a round uh, just for now because we haven't actually teleported anyone to the map yet. So I'm just going to do a little example. Uh, h dot text equals uh, time left. Uh, concatenate that to the i, which is going to be the uh, it's going to be the step or the countdown in the for loop. Okay, <clears throat> right, so now that we've got that, uh, we can say at the end of the for loop, we're going to say h.text equals uh, game ended. Okay, we're going to wait three seconds to, dis to display that, and then after we've displayed that the game has ended, we're going to remove game chosen clone uh, from the workspace. Okay, so this is how it works. Game chosen clone is copied into the workspace. So there we go. Our disappearing plate is now there in the workspace for people to play on. Uh, then the countdown comes up uh, for i equals 10 to 1, uh, step minus 1. So we're going to keep taking away one second from the from the timer. Uh, h dot text equals time left, and then we're going to display the time left. Okay, and then we're going to wait one second. Uh, we don't want to wait nothing because then the for loop is going to finish instantly. So we want to wait one second, and then once the for loop has ended, so once we've counted down all the way to one, we're going to display that the game has ended. We're going to wait three seconds, and then we're going to remove disappearing plates from the from the workspace. We don't want to keep it there because then we're just going to have tons of different mini games all pasted into workspace, like loads of them, copies of them, and we don't want that. We just want one mini game there. So this should now work. Hold on, uh, just checking if there's anything wrong with it. Nope. So once the game, once it's destroyed the disappearing plates from the lobby, it's going to quit out of the if statement. We're going to wait one second, and then we're going to loop all the way back round to the beginning. We're going to check if there's more than one player in the game. Okay. So let's go and test it now. I'm gonna re I'm gonna go through the script again uh, afterwards. If if you don't if you did, if you didn't get it, I'm going to uh, loop through the script again. Okay, so we've started up the server. There needs to be more than one player to start. Yep, that's true. Oh, wh why did I just start another server for? Hmm. Let me just close this one. So start player. Tools, start player. Okay. So, yep, yeah, now we've got one player in the game. Uh, and it still says there needs to be more than one player to start. Okay, so let's give it more than one player. Let's start another player and let's see what happens to the script when the second player joins. Okay, so the second player has joined. Now we're switching to deciding what game to play. Mini game chosen, disappearing plates. Okay, oh, there it is. Now we've got our timer counting down. Let's just finish the timer. game ended. We've now removed it from the workspace. If we go to lighting minigames we can still see that disappearing plates is there. 
because we haven't we, because we made a clone variable okay we made a clone variable to put disappearing plates into the clone then we copied the clone to the workspace we didn't move disappearing plates from the lighting to the workspace we cloned it into the workspace okay so yeah it works it works just fine it works just how I wanted it to work now when we remove one player let's wait until the end of this round and see what happens when we've, we've, we've removed one player from the game so we've only got one player in the game now there's only one player left uh, let's see what happens it should get yep here we go there needs to be more than one player to start yep so yeah it works the script works next tutorial we're going to be going over teleporting people to the to the to the map and actually getting the mini game to work okay so we're going to be removing different plates plate by plate okay so I think that went pretty well now what I want to talk to you about now is I'm just going to go through it one more time just very quickly uh, just so I'm sure that you get what's happening so mini games table contains uh, all the different mini games inside the mini games model uh, hint that's obvious what that does We've got our game loop, we've got our if statement to check how many people are in the game. Uh, once that's sufficient enough, we're going to display what game to play. We're going to choose a random game, anywhere from 1 and up until the number of elements inside this table. Uh, game chosen equals the index of the table, so we've chosen a random number. And now we are selecting a random, uh, a random game inside this minigames table. Then we're going to display what game we've chosen. We're going to create a clone of the game, put it into the workspace. Then we're going to do our game timer. Uh, and then we're going to remove the game from the workspace once the game is over. Okay? So that's how it works. And uh, oh, I hope you understand how it works now. And, uh, well, that's pretty much it. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel when you know where, so that you're notified when new tutorials come out. Okay? Also, I've started using Twitter as well, uh, at PeacePodRBLX, it's just Roblox for short, RBLX. I might put the link in the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me on Twitter, because I'm also doing live streams as well, um, Roblox live streams, okay? It's pretty fun. Uh, Alright, so anyway, I'll see you in the next tutorial then. Bye.